Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Car Wash Magazine Live. I am your host, Matt DeWolf, editor-in-chief of Car Wash Magazine and the only influencer that you need to know. I'm just kidding. You've written that. If your eggs are all in this basket, my friends, you are in big trouble. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, this premise of what if there was like one thing that you could do that would get your brand and your business exposure to hundreds of thousands of people, right? And would just get them coming to the door. It's like um, you know, diners, drive-ins, and dives. You know, Guy Fieri shows up and all of a sudden you're a big hit. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and we're going to talk about whether it's worth it, about how you might be able to leverage it a little bit in your business, and a little bit about really what that means and what influencer marketing is, what it isn't, what you should not do. Uh, because uh, as we learned in a previous episode of this show, failure is valuable, my friends, and we can all learn a few things from it. So, um, in today's show, we've got a, an exclusive panel for you. This is the first time I think that, that it's shaken out this way. Um, we've got all females on the panel joining me, so let's bring them into the show here. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you. Great to be here. All right. I mean, come on. Like, I asked you guys for energy. One more time. Welcome to the program. Woo! Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Guys, uh, this is a fun topic, all right? So we're talking influencer marketing. Um, you all have, have done a little bit of this, and so we're going to get your perspective on it and uh, whether or not it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, um, whether it smells as bad as cleaning the pits. Um, that's completely irrelevant, but I put it in the social post, so we got to talk about it. Uh, and we're going to get started. So uh, first things first, I just want to start out with everybody's sort of um, – positioning statement on influencer marketing. Where are you with it? What do you think about it? I'm going to give you all 60 seconds uh, to kind of give us um, the lay of the land in terms of where you stand. We're going to start with Beth from Express Wash Concepts. Uh, let me get you queued up here, Beth. Beth, what is your stance on influ influencer marketing? I'm, I'm going to trip over that one all day, guys, but it's influencer marketing. It's difficult to yes. say. It is influencer. absolutely difficult to say. So the main question is, are we still doing thumbs up, thumbs You can down, give me thumbs, thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah, you give me whatever you want. <laughs> So, you know, I tell you what, I love in little bits and pieces, mixing in influencer marketing into our overall marketing mix. I think that it's an extremely quick way to build brand awareness, and it really gives you a chance to be creative and fun and get your message out there. So I think everybody should have a little piece of influencer marketing in their overall strategy. A little bit. Just, just a little, a little bit. bit. Just a little just bit. Just a little right. bit. All right. Let's go to the middle. Uh, Olivia Gleason uh, from Mr. Shine. Olivia, what is your stance on influencer marketing? You're the you're the young one in the bunch. This seems like it's right <laughs> up your alley. Uh, well, I think the traditional influencer marketing is kind of a wild concept, like going through an agency and finding that famous person um, and paying the agency a lot of money and the person a lot of money. And that person may not really even live near your business, right? They have a million followers or something around that. Um, so that side, I don't really think is beneficial maybe for our industry, but I think that influencer marketing on a smaller scale, maybe where your marketing team or your PR person is going out and finding these people and kind of being involved in what they do, um, almost like networking, then that's kind of where the bread and butter is of influencer marketing. And you can do a lot with that on a local scale. All right. So, uh, Olivia is maybe a little bit more pro than Beth. But still, we're kind of both in the same camp here. It's do a little bit and do it where it makes sense. Okay, so, uh, Anne, uh, why don't you round us out here? What is your stance on influencer marketing? I would say I'm also middle of the road on this uh, topic. We're really trying to figure out the secret sauce on how we can make it work for our business here and to what degree, where we add those little bits in, with what type of personality and how we do it. Um, and really against which goal. So what are we doing? Are we acquiring new followers? Are we getting the brand out as Beth had mentioned? So really we're still experimenting with it and kind of moving those dials up and down the mixing board, if you will, trying to find that right, um, right configuration that's gonna help us meet our goals. Yeah, I love that. I, uh, look, you all don't care what my stance is, uh, but I'm with you guys, right? Middle of the road, try some stuff, do a little bit of it, but only do it if it makes sense. Right, and so we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Uh, guys, girls, friends, whoever you are watching, there is a poll feature that we tried out this week on the, on the program. I don't know if it's working or not. Um, let us know 
either try to click the poll, see if we can get some results, or comment uh, on below and let us know um, your response to that poll. We'll fix it next week, I promise. Um, if you have questions as we go through this program, do keep those in the comments below and we'll get those answered for you. Uh, remember, there are no stupid questions. There are only questions that we will not answer. So. Let's move forward, friends. All right, so the first thing I wanna get into is um, with influencer marketing, where have we seen success? Like what's, what's actually worked in this, in this um, kind of new space? And I'm gonna start with Beth, because uh, you've got an interesting story about a local bakery. So Beth, uh, the floor is yours. Excellent. Well, there are no stupid questions. I may have stupid answers. <laughs> so how, how is that to set this up? Listen, you know, I'm going to be completely transparent here that, that we do not have this this full-blown influencer strategy, right? And so we're kind of learning as we go. And, and what the buzzword is today with influencer marketing, we've kind of been doing along through brand ambassadors, right? So, so it's, it's all in how I guess you term it here. Um, but to give you a, a recent good example of something that worked with us is, is tying in through our grand openings. We always order pastries or, or baked goods, food items, right, for our guests. And the last grand opening that we did up in the Cleveland market, we found this local bakery. We're not going to go chain here. We're going to do hyper local, which is important to us. And little did we know, they have an Instagram follower following of over 500,000 people. <laughs> and they proactively, you know, said to us, send us a picture showcasing our goods at your grand opening, and we're going to blast this out on social media for you. So I think it's those little accidental influencer um, <laughs> types of marketing tactics, which are surprising, but that's exactly what we should, I think, as car wash operators, be looking out to do. Be none of us, or I'm going to be jealous if you do, <laughs> have you know millions of dollars in, in budget to reach out to these high-profile influencers. So we have to be creative with how we do it. Well, and to, to Olivia's point uh, right from the get-go, it might not be worth it. Even if they have millions of people following them, it might not be the smartest thing for you to do. So keep that in mind, friends. Olivia, you've got, a, you've got a, another story that's kind of in this vein of kind of keeping it local and keeping it um, community-focused. Can you share what, you, what you've been doing? Yeah, so there's a local group. Um, it's kind of a grassroots movement of two women who started this group in 2017 and their goal was to kind of encourage specialty shops and restaurants, businesses into the area because it's a growing area tremendously. Um, so we got in with them. They just kind of requested, you know, $250 for the year um, sponsorship because they do a lot of things going to dinners with city officials and all these things. They don't have like an income for the group. So with that, they do social media posts. They do giveaways. Um and then they'll post constantly throughout the year. So we built this relationship. And then in year three this year, I'm like, why don't we just tag their cars with unlimited tags to get them coming through more? So that's what we did. And they're always posting on their stories. Um, and then they're kind of, you know, the, uh, it's funny with car washes. Everyone loves to post on their Instagram story, but they're at the car wash. So it becomes a trickle effect, right? And other people are coming after they're posting. And I'm finding other influencers that way because I go and I thank them on the Instagram mm -hmm. story thing and I go look at their profile and I'm like, hey, they have a good following. I'll reach out to them. Here's a wash bug. Here's an unlimited pass. And kind of just build like that group, like Beth was saying, a group of influencers. But I think that when you have a group like that Upper West Side Phoenix group has 20,000 followers on social media and they're in the community, they have such a voice and the, that's the goal, right? You want to bring new customers in. We all have that same goal, but you want someone who is in the community, who people trust to be representing your brand, not just some famous person who you're not sure um, if everyone likes them or what their stance is kind of like that. So they've worked out great for us. Um, they're awesome. And honestly, I don't know uh, what I do without them sometimes. <laughs> Well, we've got a we've got a good a good failure story that I hope Beth will share with us in a little while about uh, um, hitching your horse to the wrong or hitching your carriage to the wrong horse, maybe right. So we'll we'll get into that in just a minute um, about some of the pitfalls here. But I I think one of the important things for us all to remember, um, I really love how Bre Beth framed this up. 
talking about brand ambassadors, right? This is, influencer marketing is not necessarily different from what we've kind of always done and how we've always wanted to build brand and bring people up and have them talk about our, our businesses. What's different is that now everybody's a publisher and everybody can share everything all the time. And so it's really just, it's the same thing, but there's some nuance. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Uh, and at Soapy Joe's, you all, you all do some community stuff too, but um, I want to talk about the Tunnel of Love campaign a little bit because I think that gets us down a little bit different path with how we can kind of keep things focused to, to do a little bit of this influencer marketing and make it impactful. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with our Tunnel of Love campaign, it was a point in time campaign um, that was really focused on the community, as, as you mentioned. And what we did was partnered with Honey Jewelry Company, which is a local um, diamond shop, and they have a really great following. It is national. So that's really a balance between making sure that we're hitting that San Diego market, which is where we is our trade area, and also finding something that was relevant to the program. So with Tunnel of Love, the program itself, it was a wedding-based theme, love. We love our members, <laughs> as we always say. And so having that diamond uh, partner who had this great Instagram following, um, almost 50,000, which for us was a really great number, um, was able to pull through the concept of having an influencer and make it relevant to that campaign. We also added on a couple other local influencers who are personalities in the San Diego area and had a lifestyle following. So it wasn't necessarily car wash because again, this was more focused on fun and love for Valentine's Day. So we were able to partner with Ashley Nell Tipton, who was a winner of Project Runway, which is a fashion show um, on Bravo. And she's got a huge following, again, national, but a local gal. And also Bella Noya, who helps actually span down into the Spanish market across the border. Um, so we were really able to do a multi-layer strategy there, bring in people who we thought were really relevant to the San Diego market, um, reach outside of car wash, reach outside of that kind of core to find those lifestyle influencers in that case that really helped us amplify. So they were resharing our content. Um, and in the case of Honey Jewelry, they actually contributed greatly to the actual prize we gave away. They gave away wedding rings to the winner of the contest. So really a great rich partnership there that they were able to benefit from us which really, it's got to be a win-win or else it's really just pay to play. And I think sometimes people can start to see through those, um, uh, you know, more transactional relationships. Yeah. So this yeah. one really truly was where we were able to bring that influencer in and they had a lot of skin in the game, so to speak. And, and it really made that rich partnership. They were pulling and pushing just as hard as we were to make sure it was successful. Yeah, I think, um, first of all, thank you for explaining who those people were, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea who you were talking about. Um, second of all, um, I think that I think that that's huge that you can you can leverage some of that connection and that relationship with the influencers to be able to, uh, I don't know, get good prizes, um, get good, good kind of influence both ways in, in terms of both the what they're doing for you. But then, you know, because they're able to give you a prize, you don't have to pay for that thing right? That's going to get into a topic we're going to get into in a minute, which is how you can barter. Um, Olivia talked a little bit about uh, putting tags on folks' cars so that they could they would post. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, I want to shift a little bit. Folks, if you're watching at home, uh, Katie Wright, I see you're watching. Thank you. Yes, I am very outnumbered today. Um, this, I don't know if this will happen again. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. If I get beat up on too much, no more, no more. But um, <laughs> Oh, Katie, thank you for the question. How do you guys, how do you guys, how do you gals, um, sorry, that's probably pejorative. How do you women in this industry mitigate influencers pulling stunts or challenges? So um, I, ju I just saw a post on Talk Car Wash the other day about this. Somebody ran a Jeep through a wash, right? And it was a, it was a question about whether or not they should leverage that. How do you, when you're working with these influencers, keep them from doing crazy stuff like that? Like top down, you know, go through the wash and Whoever wants to feel this one, have at it. I would say I haven't had someone go off the rails like that purposefully, but we did get pickup from a local influencer. It was called Dago TV here in San Diego. Um, and we were like, woohoo! I mean, this is hundreds of thousands of followers. And so we had crafted a relationship with them. And then we ended up seeing over time that their content was, was a little too mature, um, a little too racy for our audience. And we just gently parted ways with them. Uh, we didn't opt to re-up with them. Um, but again, as Olivia was saying, we were giving out like month-long passes. So there wasn't a hard break 
break at the end of their month. Um, and it was great because it, it was a win-win. They did repost what we asked in the, the moment that we worked together. Um, but again, we just saw in um, you know, that's not a knock on them. Again, they didn't do anything wrong, but we just determined over time that their content wasn't a great match for the family feel that we were trying to put forward. So um, decided uh, just to simply go another way, but they didn't um, do anything overt with our brand. <laughs> and, and when you, um, can you talk about just a little bit about how you then split? Because I think that's an important thing, right? Like how do you, you have this brand that is promoting your brand, right? And they're all in, they're all in. And then you're like, whoa, we're not really brand aligned. Like, we need to like break up here. Like, let's not do this. So how did you how did you do that with them so that it didn't end up in backlash? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's delicate, right? Um, you want to be respectful. And again, they didn't do anything wrong as yeah. far as speaking outside of their brand voice. So it was really more a choice on our side. Um, we were dealing in terms, again, of monthly passes. So at the end of those 30 days, um, and, you know, honestly, we had been reaching out to them. So they hadn't been soliciting us. So there wasn't a moment where I had to be like, hey, no, it wasn't overt. It was more delicate than that. Um, so it was more of us not reaching out and keeping them on our short list. Like Olivia said, kind of curating that group, those go-tos and knowing when to pull the, the levers on, on which item. So, um, you know, we just sifted them out of the list and, and it's been um, a peaceful transition. <laughs> maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't even notice, right? Maybe. They yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and if, if they didn't, you know, I think that's telling too. Like again, we got to make sure that when you're doing these uh, interactions with the influencers, that it's a win-win. And if we were a small blip for them, maybe they were taking those 30 days of car wash pass, but it really truly wasn't something they were interested in. And I think that that can speak volumes too. Mm -hmm. If it's no news to them that we're no longer <laughs> around, maybe that really is the indicator that it. It wasn't a super fit for them either. I, I think the more you're really aligned on what their goal is as an influencer, what their content is, the better off the relationship is going to be. And I, I think that the viewers too, I mean, we're talking a lot about the influencers, but it's really about their viewership. And if they can sense that there's a misalignment or they can sense that it's like maybe an incongruous fit a little bit, I, I think that that's really telling also. Yeah. Yeah, huge, huge. Um, well, and, and I, I think Anne makes a great point too, that this is all about the relationship that you have with these influencers. You have to build that. And before you you build that and you target these influencers, you really need to take the time to understand their demographic, right? And then take the time to get to know them, work on content development together um, because you just don't want to turn somebody loose and, and have them you know, come up with their own content, right? And then run the risk of, of, um, you know, something that you wouldn't want um, as far as a campaign to go. So I, I think that's super important is all the work that goes on in the front end before the campaign even goes live. Yeah, I think that's so true. I mean, they're a quick and easy way, right, is just to build your own posts and say, yeah. hey, repost this or hey, republish this. But it, it just it can fall flat and I think the more you're involved up front with Honey, we had lots of pre-meetings. I mean, there was a real true engagement and a real true win-win right from the start. So I, I, I agree with you agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> the, the authentic, uh, authenticity piece, I think, is, is huge there, right? Because, and we've, yeah. we touched on this a little bit, like consumers, as much as, you know, we're all consumers, we can be blinded a little bit sometimes, but we're not that dumb. Right. Like we, we can see when when something's not genuine, when somebody's um, posting a post that they're getting paid to do. Um, that's why there's a there's a little nuance here. So even when you're if you're working with the brand and you are giving them some of those pre-populated things, make sure that you're willing to say, you know what, though, like put this in your own voice. Like I want this to come from you. And and those relationships and that authenticity is super important because if they don't actually buy into your product, you shouldn't probably be going after them. I mean, it's, it won't be a good fit in the long run. Um, let's switch gears here. Uh, Alexa, thanks for commenting. Uh, Alexa, um, for those of us on the call, uh, she said that you can also use a content approval strategy so that you know they're posting beforehand. So you can kind of, um, have eyeballs into it. So you feel a little bit more control about your brand. Um, and you're not completely letting it go. And so having someone else own it. So that's one strategy. Um, let's come back to, um, Beth, you had talked about, um, tying some of your influencer efforts to a campaign uh, around your openings. So um, mm -hmm. is that is that kind of like every opening you do a campaign there? Most, yes, absolutely. And, and I think that 
one example that I can talk about today would be our Yelp influencer events that we tie in around our great openings. Um, so, you know, it's as easy as going online, right? And doing a search to see if there are Yelp influencers in your community. And it's a fantastic way to get these people out to your wash surrounding your grand opening to kind of start to build your reviews that are on Yelp. Because I think that, that Olivia and Anne would agree that that's probably our, our, our hardest right um review platform to um to build in a positive manner um and, and so that's something that we do with most of our grand openings now is that we start with that and then also with your influencers i mean look around they're right in front of you your nonprofit partners if you know you're tying in a donation campaign around your grand opening they're fantastic mm -hmm. influencers um your own team members are a perfect example of influencers that you can leverage and then your customers. Yep. So um, the obvious is right in front of you. It's just how I think you choose to, to use them. Yeah. It's all, all in how we frame this thing up, all in how we frame it up. Influencer marketing can feel a little bit like foreign and, and out there, but it's not, it's right there. Uh, just take it in small bites, small bites. Um, okay. So we've got a question that we're going to, get to in just a minute. Joseph, Adam, I see you. Uh, we've got your question in front of us. It's a little bit off topic. We're going to come back to it. Hang in there with us. I want to talk a little bit um, now about uh, how we can kind of barter or trade to get some influence. So not being specifically pay to play, but you know, a little bit, a, a, a tit for tat sort of a situation. Um, Olivia, you were talking about giving away some of your passes and, and tagging some folks in that group. Can you just kind of um, share how that worked, how you did that process, um, how that's been beneficial for you all? Yeah, so like I was saying with the Upper West Side ladies, um, that relationship we built over two years, and this kind of goes into what we we're just talking about with people you trust to influence your brand. So um, they would just come through the wash and post, and uh, in year three, I'm like, let's tag them. We finally got to that point where we felt like we trusted them, they knew our brand name, they knew what we wanted to say, right? We educated them, which is so important. They're basically like part of your management team. They know so much at this point. Um, so that's like a no brainer. And then the other influencers who I find through other Instagram, like story posts, I'll kind of start out with like wash books, right? Five here, five there, once they run out to just kind of see how the relationship goes. And it's usually pretty great. Um, and I haven't tagged anyone else yet, but, um, just kind of left it to those two. Again, it's just like a tiptoe thing, a little bit here and there, and it's worked so far um, for us. And then also what we will do with them is we'll give them, they'll be like, hey, do you want to do a giveaway? Um, so they'll do a giveaway on their Instagram. And part of the entry requirements to enter the giveaway is to follow Mr. Shine AZ on Instagram. We gain like 100 followers overnight, right? So there's just so much that you can do with it when you're just giving a little down the road um, once that relationship continues to develop that you can, you know, capitalize on. Yeah, I love that. Um, we And we talked a little bit about how you all were trading some, trading some stuff. Beth, same with you. Do you guys have anything to add to this specific area of expertise? Well, I think that, you know, we said earlier, where are we on this topic? And yeah. I think that the low price point or low barrier to entry, both in terms of how you can execute it and, and getting to that barter stage and the actual dollar value of what people are willing to trade for is so low. So barrier of entry being low in terms of cost and level of effort is why we keep experimenting with it and keep it in the mix. So, I mean, in terms of how do you go about negotiating with folks. Like Olivia said, I mean, we're literally looking at Instagram, who's following us, who's liking us, clicking through, and you simply direct message them on the platform of their choice. So it, it's really quick and easy. You know, interested in working with us, interested in setting up a conversation. If they reply, great. If they don't, okay, too. So it's really an easy way to get going. And, you know, we've found that people are really willing to trade for those, like Olivia said, wash passes, monthlies. It, it's just such a low barrier of entry. I say go for it and just direct mail or direct message some people on the platform. Um, and, you know, really, we, we want to keep this in our mix. 
I can't be on the show without talking about our customer survey. <laughs> we asked people, where do you get your news? Yeah. And the biggest answer was social media. And there was a 13 point drop between social media being where they got their news and the next category, which was local broadcast. So it was the number one way people in our market are indicator, our customers anyways, are indicating to us they get their news. So we want to be out there. We want to be negotiating for the right thing. And again, it's easy. Just direct mail someone, <laughs> direct message them. Well, it, what, what's funny too is like, so is bartering hard to get started? Is it hard to get connected with these um, influencers? The answer is no, because guess what? Most people will say, man, I should really reach out to so-and-so to see if they would be interested in doing this thing with us. But they don't because they feel like, oh, they get so many messages. There's no way. They're, they don't, they're not going to be able to see it. They won't consider me. They will. Because guess what? 95% of the other people did the same thing as you just did and didn't send the thing, right? So it's like, just send it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Just craft a message. Yeah. Make sure it's it's very you know very well outlined that of of what you need from them and what they need from you. And you know what's the worst that's going to happen? They don't respond. Right. Well, the, and keep in mind too, these are content creators, and mm -hmm. they're always looking for something fresh talk that they can talk about. So maybe they hadn't thought about car wash, and the a, the light bulb goes off for them. So you know their main purpose on social is to be out there creating content, creating revenue and, you know, in, in a sense, wealth for themselves, right? They, they're making income from this if this is how they're uh, making their living. So they need those connections. They need to keep their audiences engaged with cool new stuff. So don't be shy. Just go for it. Love it. Love it. Um, all right. We've got another question coming in from Katie. Um, Katie wants to know, if you all would allow employees to act as behind the scenes influencers, like um, her example is the ice cream cake guy at Cold Stone. I'm not familiar with this, whatever this is. <laughs> Katie, I'll check that out later. Um, but like, would you would you guys encourage or allow employees to be behind the scenes influencers in, in that sort of vein? And if any of you know what that is, help me out here. <laughs> Well, I know I like Cold Stone. Yeah, but right. I, yeah, I love ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we haven't gone there ourselves. I will say it's been about two years now, but we had an employee who stumbled at work and they caught it on camera. And it was so comical, like just his recovery and delivery that it got over a million views. I can't remember the platform. It may even have been TikTok. It, it's been several years now. But in that sense, we're like, man, we really wanted to um, ride the line between saying like, oh my gosh, did this employee get hurt? And was there a safety thing? Like he tripped I and mean, there, there wasn't, wasn't an issue, but we didn't even want to go down that rabbit hole of, you know, is anything wrong for this employee? So in that moment, in that instance, we, you know, we tried to pull back from it. Um, we haven't approached it and embraced it in terms of a programmatic aspect, but man, I, at the time I was like, are you kidding me? This guy gets a million views. Like <laughs> it, it's hard to get to that level. And you know, something funny is, is just a stumble and trip at work. And, uh, if you're funny and engaging, it gets the views and just even the stuff you don't even plan can get views like that. Well, Katie gave me some, Katie gave me some, um, some help <laughs> with what the ice cream cake guy is. He's so I guess he films himself making ice cream cakes at work. So he films himself on the job talking about whatever whatever that is, which is an interesting that Coldstone would let that happen. I'm kind of intrigued actually, but you see some of this stuff. It washes right. You see TikTok videos of um, of people loading cars and dancing and doing all that kind of thing. Where where do you all stand on that front? Like, is that a, is that a thing we should be doing? Should we be allowing that to happen? Should we be encouraging that? Well, I, I think that we incent our team members to submit pictures and videos to us that we in turn post on social media. Yep. Um, I love that approach. Um, we certainly try to shy away from our team members, um, you know, representing the brand on, you know, their personal accounts without our permission. Um, and, and I think that we'll continue with that stance, but we do get great submitted content um and a lot of falls a lot of slips cool cars that come through celebrities that come through um so involve your team members i think um is definitely a strategy you want to consider i definitely want to see soapy out there doing a tiktok dance that's for sure <laughs> I haven't quite gotten it to happen yet but it's on my to-do list yeah so you've got work to do you've got something yeah. to do after this that's funny yeah homework um, we've got, I've got one question I wanted to come back to Joseph Adam. Um, he asked a question around general marketing. So we're just, we're going to go there. Uh, he just bought a self-serve. We're going to, uh, let's be model agnostic here. 
right? Model doesn't matter so much as the marketing effort behind it. Joe's looking for some tips in terms of how to kind of get going and get his, get his newly renovated, remodeled, new equipment um, wash up and off the ground. What say all of you? Let's just go down the line. Um, we'll go in reverse. And let's, let's start on your end. Oh, man. Well, Beth gave the tip that I have used personally for one of our openings to do the Yelp Elite event. And I would do that. It's called Yelp Elite. You contact your Yelp administrator for your area and they take a lot of the burden of organizing that. So they have a Yelp elite group, they reach out to them, you make the offer, free washes ostensibly, um, and then they push those people to you. So it's really um, uh, something that is facilitated and you get a lot of help to do and you drive those people through. Hopefully you give them a great experience and you turn them into users as well as reaching out and creating that network and reaching into their audiences as well. So. Um, uh, uh, kudos to Beth. It's a great tip. We used it. Yelp Elite event. There it is. Yelp Elite. Look at look at Yelp Elite. Uh, Olivia, you're in the middle here. What what tips might you have? Just, you can just go with one. One one good tip for somebody trying to brand their or um, market their newly rebranded wash. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I would say Google My Business is important because everyone's finding you on Google, right? Um, so build out that page for sure. And maybe post an offer on there. You can post on there like you can on Facebook. Yeah, so yeah, build up that build up, build up up that social strategy and Google My Business is a, if you're not doing anything else, Google My Business is a perfect place to start because that's where people are going to find you for, for sure, for sure. Beth, what, what about you? One free. tip. It is free. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, super, so, super so important. many, so many tips. Um, but I'm going to go old school and I'm going to say on site signage. Okay. Because you're going to want to drive traffic that's already driving, pun intended, <laughs> by, um, by your location. So get some huge signs out there. Do a free wash week, weekend. Um, mascot, if you don't have a mascot, get employees out there with handheld signs. Um, but <laughs> I see you laughing at me, Matt. I just, um, no, but I'm thinking of the I'm thinking of the things that you know the windsock the way, things, yeah, the, yeah, the wavy, wavy guys, guy, yeah. you know, the 15 foot inflatable <laughs> mascots. Um, visual appeal for the people who are already driving by that location. Love that, love that. Well, there you go, Joe. Uh, that was kind of, there you go, Joe. Joseph, uh, thank you for your question. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we're going to switch back here a little bit. I've got two more things I want to talk about. One is pitfalls and failures, and one is uh, NCAA's name, image, and likeness um, decision that that just came out July first. So I know. Let's go name, image, likeness first. So I know that uh, Silver Star up in South Dakota uh, recently signed an endorsement deal with a volleyball player from uh, San Diego, I believe, uh, or San, or sorry, South Dakota or South Dakota State, one of the two. Um, are you all doing anything, or is are you looking at anything on the athlete side for your marketing efforts going forward? We are. Uh, we are currently. Um, the official car wash of SDSU, San Diego State Athletics, and with the name image likeness change that came out in July, um, the Fox Sports, which is how you get in with the colleges and, and we partner with, uh, released their name image likeness statement to us. There's a lot of great area and they kind of embraced it. They're like, we, we need to address this. It's an emerging topic and we know it's on your minds, but there's a lot of great area here. So I think there's a lot of acknowledgement up and down the, the board that it, it's a developed trend, a developing topic, and everyone just wants to do right by those student athletes. Um, they're not a commodity, they're people. And so we want to make sure that they're able to do what they need to do, but then the opportunities, they're not being taken advantage of either. So it's such a delicate balance. We are looking at it because we do have those relationships. Um, and they released a platform called Open Doors, kind of like Endors, but okay. Open Doors. Okay. And I've subsequently gone on, joined, so I can see, but the reality is once I filtered to our school, SDSU and men's basketball, which is what we sponsor, there wasn't anyone on there. So <laughs> I, I was kind of, you know, um, the reality check of, you know, are there a bunch of students clamoring to be on these platforms? And was it, you know, this, this shopping spree of a personality I could just grab and, you know, start working with. For me, in this one experience, it was, you know, just focus group of one here. Um, but that was my experience is there wasn't, you know, a whole bunch of students on there that were raising their hands to participate that we see so far. 
But that said, uh, I do on Friday, this week, just tomorrow, um, have an engagement with my PR firm. They're helping us kind of explore this. So I'll see what the advice is uh, once they've taken a look at it from their professional perspective as well. But uh, that's been my experience so far with the name image likeness. Nice. That's really interesting. I think the, um, the, the platform thing is a great idea. Like whoever did that, that was like pretty smart thinking, except anytime you do a new platform, getting people to get on the thing is about impossible. So um, <laughs> Well, one thing people might want to do find the find the person on your staff who's a, who's the local sports nut, right? And see who they like. Like, who's their favorite player in the area? Who are they really high on? And then, like we talked about with the influencer pitch, just go ask them. Because guess what? Most college students, um, college student athletes, they probably don't even realize that that it's an op- it's an opportunity for them, and it, and it could be a great one. So. All right, let's, uh, Olivia or Beth, anything you guys want to add on the, in the name image, God, it's a mouthful, name image likeness conversation? I think the only thing that, I, you know, I'd like to add is that we've had these student athletes reach out to us asking for, um, you know, endorsement opportunities. And it's something that I'm monitoring. I'm going to sit back and watch this for a little bit because I'm, not exactly sure what the right approach is at this point. Um, I think that we were all in college once and, you know, some bad decisions can be made. And I'm not sure that I want to risk our brand um, being tied with that. Not that that's going to happen every time, of course, but it's it's just it's something that I'm treading um, on cautiously. We'll see what happens. Yeah, because Anna um, or Beth, you've got a... Uh... You've got a story you're going to share, I hope, in a minute here about about what happens when you attach to the wrong brand. Um, so we'll get into that. Olivia, anything anything you out, you all are doing uh, out in Arizona? We're not. We're not near any colleges, really. Um, the closest thing to us is ASU, which is about 45 minutes. So not, not really um, going to work for us at this point, but I'd love to kind of watch what Beth and Ian do and maybe see if in the future as we expand that's something that we would do. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be something to watch. But I think um, if you're not in a college town, again, it's a it's the same concept with influencer marketing, right? It might not work for you. So you got to you got to really be be mindful of that. And if you're not in a college town, it doesn't make sense to go out and get a top college ash- athlete to endorse your brand because guess what? Nobody knows your brand wherever they are. So it's a waste of money. So um, okay, last thing for everyone, uh, unless we get a few more questions coming through, uh, we're gonna go through some of the biggest pitfalls of influencer marketing. What do we need to be watching out for? And Beth, I'm sorry, but I'm going to make you tell me the story. Um, what happens when you when you attach to the wrong person? What are some risks on this front? Well, I think you never know that you're attaching yourself to the wrong person. <laughs> First of all, um, that's that's the biggest problem. But, but listen, we had one of our brands and we had a very, very strong relationship with a media partner. I'm, I'm going to leave it kind of that um, <laughs> ambiguous there. But this this media partner was our biggest cheerleader in the market at every grand opening, recorded our commercials, you know, radio, TV, huge advocate for the business. Um, I woke up one day to this individual's mugshot in a news article, and there had been a domestic incident um, and, you know, he lost his job. Uh, we were scrambling, right, trying to get all the images down and, and things like that. And, and he had been such an instrumental part of our business for years and years and years. And I, I mean, I think that that really made me sit back and think that we're not just going to have one major influencer or brand ambassador for our business. And, it, you know, since that happened, and I'm glad that it did, frankly, um, you know, it's it's really given us a pause that we need to make sure that we're working with um, a whole slew of brand ambassadors and to not just put kind of one egg in um, one basket. That's not the right way to say that, but you know where <laughs> yeah, I'm Yeah, I know to what you mean. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because the risk may not be worth the reward um, when you sit back and look at it. So um, that's my advice is just be real choosy and be careful about um, just partnering with one particular person or group. Yeah, we, we are all human beings and we all make mistakes, some of us bigger than others. So influencer marketing is all about the humans, 
So watch out. Yeah. Just there is risk for every every risk has reward and every reward has some risk. So watch that, folks. Uh, let's go down the line. Olivia, what do I need to be watching out for if I'm one to play in the influencer marketing space? I would just say that you always want to make sure that you're staying in touch with them. Um, check in. How are things going? Maybe see the last time they came by. Ask, um, you know, if there was a bad experience or whatever, you just want to make sure that you have an open communication with them and they feel like they can come to you. Um, you never want them to like fall off and maybe tell others of an experience. Um, make sure that they are people that you trust. You've met a time or two. You've done some serious social media creeping on them <laughs> to see what they're doing in their free time. And they're not representing your brand in a bad way. Um, I do that before I <laughs> dole out some wash bucks. It's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's a risk every time you're, you're doing that bartering type thing. Um, so I would just say, watch out for that and watch out for people with a large following. Like I said, that may not necessarily be in your area. Um, it might not be worth your time. Social media creeping is a, is a legit skill friends. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have it, you should hone it. If you're, if you're in marketing, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and round us out a little bit, round us out here and bring us home. Uh, what's your advice? What should we be watching out for when it comes to influencer marketing? Well, I would um, say watch the timing of what you're doing. And I'd say keep it short and sweet. That way, again, if things kind of pivot or you decide that it's not a good engagement, there's already a nice elegant end um, to what you're doing. And the reality is social media platforms move so fast and it's an ever-changing environment. So making sure you're timing it right, whether it's a month or six months or like one season really allows you to control that as that environment evolves and develops. And those influencers need to evolve and develop too. So I say, you know, size it correctly for what you're trying to do, make it relevant to your goals. Um, but that all always gives you a way to pivot and renegotiate if you um, uh, find that's relevant for you at the end of the term. Awesome. Keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. So uh, there you have it, friends. That is influencer marketing, at least round one. There's going to be a few rounds of this uh, as we go through this, I'm sure. Um, be mindful Be mindful as you get out there, right? And you're talking to, especially if you're going to use an agency, if you're going to go in and have some people help you with your marketing, um, be pretty skeptical. All right. Because right now people are going to come at you hard with an influencer marketing strategy. Just take the things we talked about today, keep them all in mind. Keep it, uh, keep it uh, campaign focused so you can measure it. Uh, keep it, keep it maybe around a bartering platform so it doesn't cost you a lot to get into it. Um, and you know, be careful because we are humans. We make mistakes, and there is risk. So, um, look, it's been awesome having you all on the program. I, uh, I think I will do another all female panel again sometime. I didn't feel too out of my depth, except for when we were talking, we were talking fashion for a minute and I, I got a little glossy eyed. So I apologize. <laughs> um, but Beth, Olivia, and thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, if you all are watching at home and I know you are, because what else would you be doing on a Thursday? Um, you can catch more episodes like this, uh, like uh, the other inspirational stories we share on a weekly basis on this program at carwashmagazine.com. Um, you can catch some of these programs that we select specially uh, to release on podcast audio only episodes at carwashthepodcast.com or anywhere you're consuming that content. And you know what? Next week, we've got another fantastic program for you with a conversation with another uh, rock star female in this industry. Katie Pierce from Sunny's is going to be on the program having a, uh, an insightful conversation. And until next week, when you're out there washing cars, there's only one thing you've got to do, and that's keep it clean. I'm just having a good day, having a good day.